Working out with a workout partner is probably killing your gains. Ooh, hot take. <laughs> oh, yeah. What? Hot take. A little controversial. Yeah, I know a lot of people like to work out with workout partners, and I definitely think that there's sometimes value, right? Like the motivation aspect and someone to kind of check your form and mm. all that stuff. But I think more often than not, what a workout partner tends to do is you work out either more intensely than you should – Use weight that you shouldn't be using. Do exercises that might not be ideal for yourself. Mm -hmm. Or, on the other side, you waste time. Yeah. You're not doing You're much of a workout. You're yeah. yeah, You fall into their patterns, not your own patterns. Yeah, somebody is always losing in the relationship. Yes. Somebody's gaining, somebody's losing you're, in the relationship. Because you're following their workout. Right. There's always, there's always whether well, the partner that is, is showing up that's listening right now, they're like, that is not true. It's benefit. Okay, mm -hmm. well, then you're the one benefiting. You're fucking your friend. Yeah. So <laughs> somebody's getting fucked. Like somebody yeah. is having to you're progress, that, you're fired, buddy. change, or do what the other person wants or needs. And it's not what's ideal for that person. Yeah. It's impossible for two people to be following the, the work, a workout routine, and it's perfectly ideal for both of them yeah. at, at that time. Yeah. Later. Now, I do want to be look. I want to be very clear. Okay. Um, if you love working out with a workout partner, you guys match up pretty well. It helps keep you, you consistent. Share the same protein shakes. You've got you've got a good you know kind of uh, vibe going on. Um, there's nothing wrong with that at all. I mean, that the social aspect of exercise can be amazing. It's one of the reasons why fitness modalities like CrossFit exploded. And introduce people to exercises that a lot of people weren't doing before. It was that social aspect. It's a very powerful part of fitness for a lot of people. But what you don't want to do, and I think this is the real lesson of what I said, and I know I, the way I opened it was kind of get people's attention, but the real lesson is don't forget that you need to train yourself. Mm -hmm. It's your practice. You know, I remember, um, you know, I've taken a few yoga classes, <laughs> and that's funny to say, Lies. a few. But I remember in, in a, there was a really good one, and the instructor said, this is your practice. So if this hurts yeah. or if this is too hard – move into this pose or pause. And I thought that was really good because when you're in class, you can kind of get yeah. carried away. It's your journey. And I, and I think like initially, especially in the beginning, accountability is something that yeah. you, like, you're really seeking that and you want to, to, to be able to find that. And, and so having a friend around and like doing it together, it sounds like a great idea. And it is initially, but you got to evolve past that and really like take ownership of your own efforts uh, going forward. Yeah. Well, it, it does contradict a bit of what we say, right? We, we say that a, a, an inferior workout program done consistently is better than a superior program done inconsistently. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you are the type of person that won't show up to the gym uh, unless your friend is meeting you there, then continue on, you know, do your thing, meet mm -hmm. with your friend, get your workout partner. But the truth is uh, that's you, you want to want to evolve beyond that. You want to evolve to a place where you don't rely on somebody else. to. That's the key, by the way. Right. You don't you... want to need a workout partner. Right. You want to, it's okay to have one, mm -hmm. but you don't want to be in a position where you need a workout partner because now your potential inconsistencies are, are higher. Right. If they miss or if something happens to them, and what would happen to me quite often, and by the way, this is one of the reasons why we don't work out uh, together. I mean, we work out together, but not together. Like we're all working out at the same time. Together, but not together. Yes, yeah. but we're not doing the same exercises and, and, and you know, you know, doing Holding set by set. Like that. No, no. We and, don't and do that stuff. No, only one time. Just but mainly, here's Saturdays. why: it inevitably it, I compromise my technique, or inevitably I train a little more intensely, or I do an exercise that may be not ideal for me because one of you guys is doing it, so I'm jumping in, and so there's a bit of a compromise there. And I can see some value in, in that sometimes, but I think if you get to the point where you need a workout partner and you're compromising your technique and your form and you're going harder than you should and using weight you shouldn't lift and all that kind of stuff, then you're you're hurting your progress. Well, and also I just think a lot of the um, – a lot of times I'll see like the workout partner is sort of the spotter, yeah. right? And so this is like – uh, I used to think that was essential when lifting heavy. Like I had to have a spotter and I had to make sure that, um, you know, somebody was there to, to be able to dig me out of a bad situation when in fact I actually got hurt because of my spotter. Yeah. So, uh, you know, learning the, the proper technique to bail and, and be able to, you know, get rid of weight and, and have these safety attachments now that they have uh, for racks and all these kinds of things. Um, but I mean, it does play a lot more into like, uh, you go a little bit more intense than probably you should. You're not really listening to your own body's signals. Uh, you're trying to push through that. Well, yeah, I'm I glad you went that way because that's the person I think is, uh, that needs to drop the workout partner the most is I think my younger self who you're alluding to as was your younger self, which mm -hmm. is the, the kid who 
trains with somebody and the reason they train with somebody is because they need a spotter for every lift because every lift they're taking to failure. Mm. And we talk about that all the time about going to failure. And that is not ideal for you, especially to be going to failure uh, consistently. Uh, Maybe it intermittently makes it into a routine here and there on your workouts. And there's some value to that, but training to failure almost every workout, which is what I was doing. So what I was doing always was having a workout partner and at least, you know, one or two sets, I needed my spotter, you know, help me with this lift. It was more weight than I should be doing or could do on my own and having them spot me through the workout. And you're just, you're not applying the correct intensity and the the dependence on having someone to work out there. It's kind of like a two-pronged issue. Yeah. You know what I used to hate? I used to hate this. Like when I was a workout and I'd have a workout buddy with me and I know that I'm going to stop the set here. No, no, you got two more, man. Yeah, It's like, Go away. Yeah. I don't want to hear you know what I mean? Don't, you I don't, got it. You got it. Come on, you're almost yeah, there. Like, no, no, I'm doing my <laughs> Did thing. Did you see like, that meme the other day that went around? Yes. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, Maybe ninety percent of uh, No, it said uh you, you you ain't got it, bro. No, what did it say? It said it's ninety percent of the time when your buddy your spotter says you got it, you don't got it. Yeah. You, know, yeah. Something yeah. Like that. Yeah. you didn't get it. Yeah, yeah. no, you didn't I didn't get would, it, bro. I'm gonna go back to what you said, Justin. And I used to teach my clients this as well when I would train them because my goal as a trainer was to set them up so that this is something they could continue lifelong yeah. and not require me. Just like we're saying right now, you don't want to be in a position where you require a workout. Oh, yeah. Partner. This applies to you know a client and a trainer the same way. Yes. And what I would teach my clients is how do you get the dumbbells into position? How do you dump the weight when you can't lift it anymore if that ever happens to you? Because although going to failure is too much intensity most of the time, sometimes it could be used appropriately. So you need to know how to fail if you do fail. If you fail on a squat, what does it look like? How do I get rid of the bar? If you squat, if you fail on a bench, do you know how to use the safeties? Most benches now have safeties. Or uh, there's actually a technique for failing on a bench press. If you have no safeties and you could bring the bar down and you know how to get up with the bar, I don't recommend that for most people, but there is a way to do it. So learning these techniques is important for safety. Uh, relying on a spot, spotter all the time, it could put you in a position where that one workout where you don't have a spotter, then you push yourself past a certain point, don't know how to bail on the weight, or don't know how to dump a squat, and now you're in a in a bad position. I've seen people before do that with a squat where they get to the bottom, and they're they don't they're they don't uncomfortable dumping the weight, and they start to grind, and then their back starts to round, yeah, and then they fail forward. You ever seen that where they fail forward and the weight goes oh, forward? They turn yeah. it. To- well, that's what happened when uh, one of my friends was help spotting one of my heavy squats and was trying to help me but actually kind of leaned into me and pushed me forward and oh, no. literally squashed you know, the weight on my back as I fell forward. It was awful. I can't believe I didn't blow my knees out. Oh. You know? yeah. So, yeah, I think it's it's one of those things. I don't, it doesn't get talked about in, at all, really, in terms of like how to bail and how to safely kind of make your way through. You know, I'm going to put it, I'm going to say it a, a little bit differently because I guarantee there's people who are like, oh my God, my workout partner's the best. I love them. This is great or whatever. Finding like the, a good workout partner is almost as hard as finding like a great business partner or a great like a spouse. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> yeah. uh, like this, this person has to not inflate your ego, but rather keep your ego in check. So if you work out with somebody and you feel your ego inflating, probably not a good idea, right? Uh, this person needs to make you feel like you could train more appropriately, need to be able to help you with your form and technique when you need help on it. Uh, need be able to kind of match with your similar goals, help with the motivation and consistency, um, not the opposite. You know, I'm I'm so consistent with my workouts that if a workout partner showed up five minutes late, seven minutes late, like I'm going and you can go work out by yourself now because I'm going to do my thing. So it's really hard. Now, I guess when you do find that perfect partner, it's probably amazing. But boy, that's a, a hard thing. I think the do. reasons that people like workout partners are the reasons why I don't like part workout partners, which is most people would say like, oh, I get the best workouts or they push me when I have a workout partner and I need that extra push or else I'm not going to train as hard. External motivation. And that is yeah. the reason why I don't like workout partners is I know now when I go into a workout, what level of intensity, how much volume yeah. I need to be training with. But I'm also very competitive. And it's natural when I'm with my buddies that they're lifting. If he's getting after it, it's really easy for me to fall right into that. Well, I'll do another set or I'll go ahead and throw another 25 on there. I got this. When I know. Or at very least, I'm not going to take the plate off to do my set. Right. You know, and I know that. I know that that I know what I need when I go into my workout. And it's not always this crazy, intense, you know, crush myself in in my routine. And I know that if now that being said. There are times, too, when I think there's some value in that, right? I know I haven't trained really intensely in a long time. Maybe I'm going to get in a workout with Justin or Sal, and I know that when we work out together, we're going to push each other that way. But that's not something I want to do on a regular yeah. basis. Reminds me of that that White Snake song. 
You know which one? Here, <laughs> Here I go, go again. Here my I own. go yeah. again. Yeah, on my dude. Own. That's Adam. That's Adam when he's going to the gym. <laughs> you got, you, you I see, saw, it's on my playlist, dude. It is I rock. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> everybody right now is going to be leaving their workout partner a message and yeah. singing that song. Yeah. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.